Hello everybody, this is James Amaral here for my minor term project, my ending minor term project. Um, first of all, what am I doing? I decided to do something kind of like a vlog, a couple of reasons. I've never done a vlog before. It seemed like fun. Um, and it seemed to fit the parameters of the assignment. So hopefully that works out. Number two... Um, I like to talk. I like to write too. I think I'm good at it, but talking's easier. It's a little less uh, technical. And um, three, I put together a PowerPoint last night, last minute, and I didn't feel like doing it again. And PowerPoints can be great for visual aids during a presentation, but I I find that they're kind of boring when they're all by themselves. So. Let's see how this goes. I'm here to talk to you about science fiction and fantasy. Specifically, how are they different? What is the difference? Um, why that matters? Um, first of all, kind of on a, on a topical level, science fiction, when we think science fiction, we think technology. We think laser guns, space travel, advanced medicine, and it varies uh, greatly. I mean, you have things like Scanners Live in Vain or Neuromancer, which are you know vastly technologically different. You've got spacefaring communities and all types of things. But then you have things like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And that is our world. It's just the real world, and they've just invented this medical procedure you can do. And science fiction kind of asks the what-if questions, asks some existential questions, and I think it's good at that because it's it's a little more believable uh, than fantasy. Science fiction, at least maybe amongst us now educated sci-fi types, is considered a little more highbrow. Um, it's considered a little more worthwhile in terms of literary pursuits. Fantasy, we expect swords and sorcery, myths and magic, dungeons and dragons, the list of alliterated phrases goes on and on. It's kind of considered more lowbrow. I mean, when you... If someone asks you, do you like to read? And you say, oh yeah, I love to read. If they're an English major and you tell them, I love to read fantasy books, they kind of think, oh, well, okay, this person likes to read, but they're not a very literary person. They just read popcorn novels for the hell of it, and some of us do, and I don't really necessarily think there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes we just want a good read. But, uh, you know, they're not thinking that it's it's not really a worthy pursuit academically. And so, okay, why? Why is this? Why is fantasy a less of a legitimate genre than science fiction? I think... Primarily, it has to deal with the concept of magic. Uh, while researching the Cold Fire trilogy, what I wrote my essay on, my research paper, um, I found an interview with the author done by a uh, book club website. And they asked her kind of what the inspiration for the novel was, for, for the series. And the Cold Fire trilogy is it kind of seems on the surface like it's fantasy. If you look at the cover, if you read the back of the if you read the backs of the books, it comes across as fantasy. You see a guy holding a glowing sword and you read about sorcerers and monsters and these things and you just assume, "Oh, this is straight up fantasy." Well, it's it's not really. And when that when they asked her what inspired her to write the books, she cited uh, Asimov in an essay called something like, I looked for this essay specifically, I, I tried, I couldn't find it, but it was called something like, Why I Don't Believe in Magic. And in it he talked about how in a lot of fantasy, magic is just kind of this untrumpable ex explanation for the main characters to do fantastic things or for plot holes to be filled in and it's never really explained as to why it's just magic it is the 
the very energy of creation, and it's given all these fancy terms just, just so you don't question it. And Asimov said that if magic were real, scientists would test it. It would adhere to a set of rules. There would be a first, second, and third law of magic. It would adhere to the laws of space-time and thermodynamics and physics and all of these things. It wouldn't just rewrite the rules of the world, it would complement them. It would be a part of the world. It would be exempt from the world. And that's kind of what uh, Friedman has done in the Cold Fire trilogy. She's created a, a world with magic that does adhere to these rules of, these physical rules of, of the universe. And she has come up with her own system of rules for the magic itself, things that it can and cannot do, and the, these are rules that you just can't break, and where the energy comes from, and all of these things. And so even though this series seems like it's straight-up fantasy, it actually is science fiction. The entire premise of the series is that although mankind does, they ride horses, they don't drive cars, they wield swords, they don't wield rifles. Um, the whole premise is that the human race colonized another world. They had mastered space travel. They colonized another world, and due to kind of uh, natural disasters and snafus with on this new world of theirs that they had discovered, it actually reverted them technologically back hundreds or even thousands of years. And so they were kind of stuck in the mud. So even though it seems like fantasy, once again, it's not. Or maybe it's not that it isn't fantasy, it's just that it's also science fiction. That's another thing. Just because something's fantasy doesn't mean it can't also be science fiction. Science fiction, maybe that's even a bit of a mis misnomer, or we always think of technology when we think the phrase science fiction. But maybe we should think instead scientific fiction. Fiction that adheres to scientific laws or rules. Whether or not those rules happen to be applied to technology or even to fictional natural forces on an alien world, it's still adhering to scientific principles. So... I hope this has been enlightening. That this was fun for me. Um, yeah, great series. I think you should all read it. Uh, now you can finally put a face to the name you've been reading in the forums this whole quarter. So it's been a fun class. Uh, Clint, I'll see you next quarter. And peace out, everybody.